Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Hang. This week we have actor artist Josh Davis. Now Josh and I are meeting for the first time on The Hang. I saw Josh in, well I actually saw him when he was in the original cast of Beautiful the Musical, but I just recently saw him in Paradise Square. I was blown away by the numerous characters he played in the ensemble. He was very engaging, very uh, captivating, and I just wanted to pick his brain as an artist and how he goes about creating such nuanced work. Um, so I hope you enjoy the, the podcast as much as I did. He's a great, great artist. You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. All right, Josh Davis. Hey. Am I saying that right, Josh Davis or Davies? Uh, Josh Davis. Josh Davis, welcome to The Hang. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you um, too. Mate, I saw you in Paradise Square. Okay. <laughs> and I, I remember watching you in that, and it's... I was fascinated as an actor watching that. I was just like, this guy, because you came on first as a character with, there's like three of you. Uh, Adam, yeah, we were all in the first opening scene, but yeah. there's too too much going on in the beginning. But when you and came on- And then there were on, three of us, yeah, like the, the yeah. Uptown men. What was that one character you played there? Uh, I don't think he had a name. Well, you know what's funny is me and- I know you probably gave him a name. We all gave him names. Yeah, yeah. Me, and, me and Ben, um, Ben Michael, who was played the other guy, we would always like create names on the way out there and you know, just have a good time. As I'm we telling improved. you what, that's, that came across. So then I'm, I, mem- I remember watching going, that guy is super interesting. And then I saw you come out as another part. Because how many characters did you play now? Maybe eight? Uh, s- yeah, six or seven. Well, I guess, yeah, with the, with the other big ensemble, I guess, yeah. like seven or eight. And I thought, um, this guy's got something brewing in every scene. There's something going on. He's keeping himself in it, but also for you. Yeah, yeah. And I know I saw it earlier on. And I remember I DM'd you after. I said, I couldn't take my eyes off you, but it was, I kept trying to tell myself, cause I'm still trying to improve as an actor. You're always trying to improve, course, right? Yeah. And you kind of think you want to serve the story. So you don't want to pull focus. You want to serve yeah. the story. So it's like finding <laughs> that balance because you want to be in it. And it's great that I'm noticing you, but I, th- I always felt like you were serving the atmosphere. You were serving the scene. Yeah. It's a fine line between, uh, it is, but you know, you, and I'm sure I've crossed it many times, you know, you, you have know to cross it in order to I feel to like we might've been cut from the same cloth because we always tend to always go a bit too far, but hopefully we have enough self-check to, oh, actually, yeah. I'll bring it back, I'll bring it back. Well, I think that's why I got into acting initially it was because I liked doing that. I always felt comfortable like on stage. Um, and high school was like my first time. I played sports in like middle school and stuff, but right. I never, um, there was something about like the parents yelling at on the sidelines that like interfered with my focus. Yeah. And so I was always like kind of intimidated. I liked playing, but I was not good because I was like running down with the ball or dribbling with the ball and parents were, like yelling, shoot it, shoot it. And I was like, I was taking my attention away. Ah, I can, um, I can later on, I realized, way. you know, ADD and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, growing up in the 80s, I didn't really realize what was going on. And obviously, um, but I found like I loved singing in high school. And I sang in all the choirs and stuff. And then I took my first drama class. And I remember I was in um, West Side Story. It was like my first time I was on stage in a play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I felt like a calm come over me, like when the lights hit me. It was like I was able to focus. Um, and I was kind of like a you know little class ca- clown like a lot mm-hmm. of actors are. But it was the first time where I really felt like I could, I could focus and I could like do what I wanted to and, and get a response. But it wasn't like some random people yelling at me. It was like, you know, right. I can influence someone that way. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, I want to then carry on from there, but just to stay in the Paradise Square moment, (laughs) how much... I feel like the laugh has to do. We could do a little, couple uh, shows on Paradise Square. <laughs> I'm I, sure I you know. But I, well, I'm not here for tea. There's enough <laughs> podcast people out there who like just look for gossip bullshit. But I want to get to your sure, artistry. Sure. Um, was that up? Did you have a freedom to kind of come up with every every moment? Yeah. Have those actors? Yeah, totally. Um, we did the out of town in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And it had been done in um, uh, prior to the pandemic in Berkeley. So I wasn't right. part of that. Okay. Um, but this opportunity came along and they needed somebody who could play a bunch of different characters, like a you know clown type character. Um, and I had done that in another show in New York and it was, uh, and that was good because I could play a bunch of different characters because right. I've always seen myself as like a character actor. Um, and because uh, Moises Kaufman, who was directing it, was really focused on, and they were developing the story. And you yeah. know, like when you're developing the story, like... The directors think of a billion different things, correct? And they don't always have time to think of like the the, the peripheral characters. I mean, they'll focus on your scene and stuff, yeah. But 
you know, you as the actor kind of have to help them along be like, what about this? What about this? And so I had a or lot you of just free do reign. It. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did it. I just did it. Well, you have to. And then, he was like, no, don't do that to police. <laughs> yeah. Are you good by being told rein it in? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not like, how dare you? Oh, yeah. Thwart my creativity. No, I'm fine I like to that. know my boundaries, but then if I'm not told anything, I'll, I'll push until yeah. I'm told otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And I did that a couple of times. Yeah, but sure. that's okay. But, but it's fine. <laughs> it's with the best intention. Yeah. It's because you can. Well, it all serves a story too. Yeah. Because with a story that you're you're developing, like something like Paradise Square was such a big story and there were so many storylines yeah. and plot lines um, that there there isn't time for like the creators to kind of be like, you do this and you do that. So yeah. you have to, as an actor, kind of come up with ideas. And like, so all of us in that big first scene, like we're in that, that um, in the Paradise Square saloon Mm -hmm. um, we all had character names. Like that was one of the things that we came up with. We all created like a character. Yeah. Um, and people had different characters depending on what scene was going on. And sometimes it was, I actually had lines and I was like, oh, you're the guy who delivers the bad news. Right. Um, and sometimes I was just like, just say these lines. And so you have to create something to give yourself some kind of world to live in. Yeah. You know, like, why am I even here? Mate, and that was evident. And you, you bring on that sort of history, that vibration, whatever it is that serves the overall piece, that serves, you're like pitching it back to where the story is. Yeah, thank you. That's that's how I took it, and I really enjoyed that. And I remember at one point, like, I think it was that for one of the, maybe the first dance-offs or someone was dancing, and you're up there smoking, <laughs> yeah. but still having a boogie as well. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, he's, but you were feeding off what you were watching, yeah. which then would bring my attention back down to where the story is. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, like, because you can't, you know, you as you know, you as an actor, you know. Okay, if I'm looking this way, the audience is kind of going to see me, but they're going to. Yes. I'm looking towards where the action is. But um, you were still living in that. But I was atmosphere. living in the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah. because the other thing about that show is like it's a super heavy dance show, yeah. and I'm not a dancer. Like I'm a, a solid double threat. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and listen, I, you were giving it some. You were breaking some shapes up there. Well, we we worked a lot on. So the cool thing about that show was like there was like African influence, and then there was Irish step influence, and that was the idea of like I mean the basic plot of that those two worlds merging together. Yeah. Um. And so I got to work a little bit with Chloe Davis and with um with Garrett and Jason on like the different types of dancing. Um, and I was like, I was watching all the super awesome dancers that were there and I was mm -hmm. trying to learn stuff. Um, but it was very apparent. It was like, I would have been able to do it eventually, but it would have taken me a long time. Right. Um, and also just like, just the strength to build up for like Irish step in your ankles is crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Like the kind of strength and dexterity they have. Um, so like they, I learned a couple little things, but enough to like kind of, mosey on up there right. but the funny thing was like whenever there was a dance going on i was up on the top somewhere floating yeah. around and i i got more comfortable with like moving and so i just sort of it was different every single night so that's why that's great man it yeah. keeps yourself interested and it keeps things vibrating and to keep the story fresh and you were again i saw you serving the piece which i found Thank amazing you. because it, as you say it was such a big production there's so much going on yeah and you you want to know you want to feel the environment feel the, the sort of time, but also where, where's the story? Where's the focus we want to be at? And it's a shame it closed. You know, there was, it was such a big undertaking. And I know, you know, you hear stories about what you guys must have experienced backstage and be, you know, stuff that we shouldn't be privy to. But it's a shame to see it close. You know, yeah. there was a lot of talent that. There was, there was. And there was a lot of heart in it too. I mean, I yes. think that's kind of what got us through, honestly. 100%. It was like, I've been in shows where it's like, yeah, we're a family, but like, we're just having a good time. But this was, um, I don't know. It's like people say it's like a family. It's kind of more than a family. It's like family you can you can leave. Like I wanted to be there with them. <laughs> I oh, love my mate. family too. But it's like you're when you're working with people and you're kind of going through some emotional like difficult drama. Mm -hmm. um, you really kind of pull together. And with a show like that, that's about difficult drama. Mm -hmm. It was like you you obviously want to have the drama on stage and not off the stage but in a situation like that like you kind of pull together and it made yeah. us it made us a stronger company oh man what um, a shame to see that so, uh, disband but. And it was a beautiful show too like I, I wish that more people had been able to see it and maybe someday the soundtrack will come out but who knows has that still not come out yet no that hasn't come out <laughs> oh there's okay so, there's a story there <laughs> i mean we haven't been paid for I'm, I'm i'm okay saying it you know the producer hasn't paid the musicians mm -hmm. and the actors and so it sits you know, in a hard drive with, oh, no. you know, the incredible uh, music director who, who wrote the music and. Are and, people looking into that? Oh yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're looking into it. Well, let's hope it comes out. But I'd love to see it. It's amazing. Like the music is incredible. And I really thought maybe there would have been a a corner turn with all your nominations, but yeah, what a shame, man. Yeah. Well, but it was a good experience. So met some good people. So let's rewind. So you mentioned you were into sports, but you didn't like that sort of vocal sort of um, encouragement from the sidelines, (laughs) which I get. Like I work my one of my buddies I work out with. I'm very quiet, and like I like to as you say, zone into a, a moment yeah. in silence and get through it. So let's say a bench press and I'm like struggling. He will be loud. I'm like, come yeah. on, you can do it. And I'm like, shut, shut up. <laughs> I was in a zone. It was coming. Now you're drawing attention this way. Right. Yeah. Um, well, some so, people feed off of that. Yeah. You know, I and don't. Some actors feed off of that. Um, and I, I just wasn't that kind of person, you know? No, not anymore. Like if I was in a contact sports and like American football or ice hockey, yeah, fine. Because there's so much going on and there's a lot of us on, like it's a team sport, but yeah. a solo thing. Yeah. I just want to zone in and have my own thing, you know? Yeah. Or just whisper, say, you got this buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you said you, with West Side Story, you found something that you really were passionate about and you liked that feedback. After yeah. I loved creation. it. I loved it. It was, it was great. I could focus and I could pretend and, mm-hmm. you know, and it was okay. It was a safe place to, to be like that. Um, and I remember like the first time I got applause that it was the end of the show. I was playing baby John and, uh, it was actually a huge production. It was like two high schools came together for the first time to do this, like 50 or 60, you know, kid, uh, student production. And, um, I just got this like rush. It was this rush, you know, it was like doing a drug for the first time or like, you know, it was crazy. And is this high school? This is high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I did all the, I did all the choir and magicals and acapella group and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the weird thing was like no one in my family was an actor and I didn't really know too many actors. My, my, um, my English teacher's son was like an actor in college, right. uh, but I didn't really know actual professional actors. And so I didn't, and I was also a very, like I had later on, I, I figured I had like ADHD, but I, I was a little all over the place. And so I didn't necessarily have the focus when people were like, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to do this, 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 um, being an actor, like was very intimidating to me. It was easy for someone to be like, here, audition for this play and do this. But when it was left up to me to do it, I just didn't have the confidence to right. do it. And so I ended up going to business school. I went to University of Delaware and I went to business school. And um, all I wanted to really do was be in an acapella group. Because really? I, yeah. Because I like my, my girlfriend at the time was a little older than me and she went to UVA. And I went down to visit her once and she was, I forget the name of it. It was like the Bells or the something or other. Um, but the Tufts Beelzebubs, I don't know if you knew who they are, but they're like this incredible acapella group um, at the time. And uh, they did songs like off the radio. They, they took like um, Peter Gabriel songs mm-hmm. and Pearl Jam and like, it's like 15 person like percussion. It was like super awesome. Wow. And I just was like, that's what I want to do. And so when I got into school, like I looked for an acapella group and um, eventually found like this, I, I auditioned for one and didn't get in, thank God. And I found this other one that was like, uh, it's called the hen harmonics. And, uh, <laughs> it was a bunch of like ke- chem engineer or chemical engineers who were like, like to sing. Right. And, uh, so I like sang with them. We became good friends. And then we killed that group and created another group called the Y Chromes all male acapella. <laughs> and that was like my fraternity. That was like my fraternity in college. Um, weird thing was I ended up living with a bunch of guys in college, uh, who were in a fraternity and I ended up joining that fraternity out of pressure because right. they, so I live with like the president and the, the rush chair and the vice president and the treasurer of this fraternity. And they wanted me to rush it when I was like a junior or a senior or something like that, because they wanted me to compete in the Greek God competition, which was like a um, talent contest. Right. And because they knew I sang. And so I ended up like rushing as like a junior or something. And I was rushing with a bunch of uh, like okay, when you say rushing, that's so like a fraternity like pledge to be in a fraternity. Yeah, you, know, you right, go through okay. like a rush period. The only thing I know about fraternities is what I see probably in films like Old School. Yeah, with it's Will exactly Ferrell. like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it's actually very similar to that. Okay, um, at least from what I was in the I went to college in the nineties. Um, so yeah, you like go through this you know period of like, are you good enough to be on the you know in our group? Really? And oh yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So and you, it's stupid. You have to prove yourself with this talent competition. No, I, that I had gotten in by that point. So I like did the whole rush thing. I'm like getting yelled at and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Really? Oh yeah, of course. Did you have to like chug a keg of beer at one point? I, I was not a huge drinker in college. Um, but I, there was like that, that okay. atmosphere. Okay. It was there if you wanted to do it. All right. It, okay. But my fraternity actually was 
relatively cool. They didn't ever force you to drink anything. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it was, it was, they were responsible. Um, <laughs> at least when I was there. Uh, but I, um, so anyway, I, I, I rushed and then I did compete in the, in the Greek God competition and uh, I sang Kiss of the Spider Woman, um, which is funny because it's like a couple thousand like fraternity people and people were like, you know, playing a guitar or like hitting the drums and I come out in like a tuxedo and like a red spotlight and like sooner or later, you know, <laughs> people are like, what the fuck is this? Um, and I won. So, Holy that, crap. I, you know, when you sing like Kiss of the Spider Woman and you, you know, it's a great song. Though. It was great. Yeah. I, Cause I had just done, I had done, I did one musical in college and it was, um, and the world goes around. And so I played that, that character. Right. And, uh, so I knew that, you know, I knew the song. If I was to do a YouTube search right now, yeah, are we going to find that? Oh man, I, I can't find it oh, because man. it was before, it was 1990, <laughs> when I graduated in 97, so it was like 96 probably. So okay. it was before, it's somewhere out there because I know they, they record it. It might be on like a VHS tape or something like that. So you got your business degree? I got my business degree. Yeah. And then I, I moved to, I moved to New York for like five or six months, um, worked at a, uh, like worked at a restaurant, Oops. worked at a restaurant and, um. Went to work at a casting company. I met like some random guy in like a, a restaurant and um, turned out to be like a big uh, casting company down in um, the West Village. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was really cool. And it kind of got like a, a taste for like watching actors come in and like do their thing. And, and did you take this job just because it was a job to make money? You're still thinking? You're I was not being paid for that. I, that was like free. I was, a, I was a PA. I was an intern for that i was working at a, at a restaurant to make money right and it was uh did you how long you, it was time cafe do you know time cafe it was on lafayette like this was like 97 um this was like a cool place down on like lafayette and like just okay. uh, north of the village i guess like right around like just south of astor square um and i was just talking to this one guy who would like come in frequently i guess he lived in the area and so he was one of the junior casting directors um so anyway, I, I worked there for like six months or five months and like, it was awesome. Like I, it was met tons of people and got to watch, um, I was there. So they, they cast, um, uh, what was it? There were two scripts on the grounds, uh, Cider House Rules and Shakespeare in Love. All right. Um, and they okay. did a bunch of Miramax stuff at the time. So mm -hmm. that's a whole other story. But, um, so I got to watch Gwyneth Paltrow audition Ray Fiennes. Is that, is that Ray, yeah. Ray Fiennes? Um, well, Joseph, Joseph Fines. Fines. Yeah, Joseph yeah. Fines. Yeah, his that's right because he the was brother. going. He was he was flying to England that night to go to his brother's thing. He's like, oh, Rafe, that's his name. Rafe always gets all the all the yeah. parts, and he was auditioning <laughs> for for this thing. So it was cool. Just I mean, she had already had it, but it was just cool to like be in it and like to see the the how it all works. Um, and then I again, I was like, I don't know what to do. And so, but my, did you take this? I guess internship at this casting place because of your in your interest in acting or you just thought yeah, well, I, I just wanted to, I loved movies and I just right. thought I wanted okay. to be in the world at some point. I, at one point I thought I wanted to be an agent. Um, cause that one's like, like Michael Ovitz was like the big name in Hollywood at the time. Right. And I just thought that was super cool. And, um, I didn't know cause I didn't go to acting school. I just didn't know how to be an actor. Like I went right. to business school. So I was yeah. like, I know how to get a job. I can go in, you know, I didn't know how to aud really audition. I didn't know how to pursue acting. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and I was also, I was a marketing major, so I was interested in advertising and creativity, that, that aspect. Um, and so when my, my lease was up, uh, cause it was just like a short summer thing. Um, I moved back home to Maryland where I'm from and I uh, got a job at an a, uh, ad agency in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, uh, it was pretty boring. I hated it, but I loved talking to the creatives and the producers who like made the commercials and stuff. And I had taken an editing class in college, like a digital editing class. I mean, now we can do it on our phones, but at the yeah, time yeah. it was like this huge thing called an Avid. Um, and it was like in a suite, this, uh, this room and they had fired their editor and they didn't, they were doing everything out of house. So I kind of knew how to work it. So I, I would stay after work and I taught myself how to use this machine. Sometimes I like sleep on the couch and like have my buddy wake me up in the morning. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just like sleep over at the, uh, at the, at work. Um, cause I just liked editing. And again, it was like, if I could do something and I was into it, like I could hyper focus on it. Right. Um, it was something I was not interested in. I just, it was, you know, didn't right. do it. So eventually I started editing some stuff for the producers and, uh, not doing what I was hired to do. And I got let go. Um, but I, because I had that editing, I knew somebody who, who knew somebody who needed a job, uh, to hire somebody for like, a, um, uh, at a production company right. down in DC. And so I went to work for them. And we did, 
stuff for Discovery Channel and for the Washington Capitals and the Wizards. Right. And so we did like all the in-house video for them. And then my job was to write a show called Science Live, which was on the digital networks of, of Discovery Channel at the time. And me and this other guy, Chris, who became uh, one of my best friends, we would alternate. So I would get like 20 episodes of like ants, tornadoes, avalanches. Right. That's all it said. And I had to come up with a show. And it was like a um, structured like, um, I'd say Larry King, but that's... It's a while ago. Uh, basically, like an interview show, kind of like this, but right. it, like the host would have a science uh, or a scientist on. Right. Be like, oh, we're talking about avalanches. Like, what are the why? What? How do avalanches get made? Or like, what's the science behind avalanches? What right. are we doing to stop it? You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was really cool because I could then learn. I was super into science, so I could like learn about this stuff and then get B roll, which is like the, you know, if you were to take pictures of this and then layer it over this conversation, yeah. that would be B roll. Um, and it was really awesome. I did that for like a year and a half. And I also got to shoot um, video for the Washington Capitals and the Wizards. So that was like part of our job. So I learned how to shoot camera, how to light interviews, I learned how to edit more. Um, and I was having a great time. And this was pre 9-11. And, but I was still like singing. I was like driving about an hour to work every day. And I was like singing Les Mis in the car and like, yeah. all that stuff. And, uh, and I, st I was still in the back of my head. And a couple times we had to like shoot some like little scenes uh, for the B-roll and I would like act in the scenes and stuff and have a good time. And so through a series of unfortunate events, I got fired from that job. No. <laughs> and uh, so, so, uh, so really quick, my, uh, I, had a, I had a couple friends from college and uh, this was when Michael Jordan was playing for the Wizards. And my job was to like sit on the court and just shoot Michael Jordan and then take that tape because it was not digital. It was on, right. in a beta cam. Give that to somebody and then they would send that out to the news, news reels around town and be like, this is what Michael Jordan did today. So you were courtside for Michael Jordan. I was, yeah, I was courtside with Michael amazing. Jordan. Amazing. And it's, it's amazing, but it's kind of lost to me because I was like, I appreciate Michael Jordan, but I was not a fan of right. like basketball and stuff. But I was like, yeah, it's Michael Jordan. Um, but my friends who came to the, to the game were big fans. And one of them was moving. He had just got married. He was moving down in North Carolina. So I got the media passes from somebody I knew at the, like, it's not called the MCI Center now, whatever it's called. Um, and I got them so they could come in early and watch the players like warm up and stuff. Right. So they were right ringside or courtside. And, uh, and afterwards I was like, I have to go into the locker rooms to do interviews with the players. Um, I just like sit there with my camera as they're being interviewed. I'll come get you guys later. But I told my, my one friend, I was like, I'm going to take you down as a, as a gift, um, as like your wedding gift and mm -hmm. take it. I took him into the locker room and he was right with me when Michael Jordan's getting interviewed and stuff. And, uh, so this was right after nine 11 and, um, like in November and my, my boss came up to me. He's like, Hey, two guys just tried to sneak into the locker room. They said that they were with our company. Do you know anything about that? Our company had like 12 people in it. Right. I was like, oh, no, I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> and uh, and it turns out I like texted my friends and they're like, hey, man, we tried to come see you. But <laughs> oh, no. Super drunk. And like, so they got stopped and then took off. And so like after 9-11, like it yeah. was crazy. Of course. Security was crazy. Understandable. So they had like 40 security guards looking for my friends. They never found them. But like I eventually was like, yeah, it was my idiot friends. So I got let go. No. Um, but it was the best thing that ever happened because... Um, so that was like in November, I took December off basically December, January. And then I called a friend who was living in DC. I was living in uh, right outside DC at the time. And she was an actor and she was like pretty successful theater actor. And I said, I think I want to, I think I want to try acting. Like I've been like putting it off mm -hmm. for a while and what do I do? And she's like, okay, go here and get these headshots and then take a class at the studio theater and then audition. And so that's what I did. I got my like black and white headshots and I took a class at the studio theater and I auditioned for, um, this is our youth and got the understudy role for this is our youth. Um, and, uh, it turned out this, this one actor was playing, it's like a three person show. The one person who was playing, um, uh, the part I played, I can't remember the character's name, but is this, this guy named John Bernthal, who's like a huge actor now. Of course. Um, yeah. So he's I, I like, I love the trajectory, got, trajectory of his career. Yeah. He's, he's after walking incredible. dead, what's what he did and the yeah. smart choice he made. But he had gone to, I think like the Russian theater Academy or something. So he had just, I guess, come back and he was, I guess he's from Maryland or something, right. maybe that area. And, uh, he was doing that, but he ended up going out to Hollywood and in the middle of the run. So I got to do like the last week or so of the run. Um, so that was the first time I did a play. Well, no, I did play in, in high school, but that was the first time I did a, pl a play where I was you know, paid. Right. And so, and I got the bug and I, you know, I, and 
DC is cool because they have a whole bunch of theaters in the area and yeah. they, you can, they have a thing called the League of Theater Auditions. You get like 90 seconds to audition for something. And I did that and then, you know, Did gradually. you have to take in your own, do they give you a piece? To bring no, you just that? take in 90 seconds or whatever. I, I sang like, you know, 16 bars or something and like did like a little monologue. Oh, and, then they, and then they're like, oh, come on, audition for us. So they kind of pick and choose right, who they want. Right, I see. And then I got, um, I got my equity card by auditioning for the Kennedy Center for uh, like theater for young audiences. And went on tour for like six months. And then I did a couple more shows in DC and then realized eventually that like if I wanted to be an actor and support myself as an actor, because I was working as a, as a waiter, um, DC was not the place to do it. You know, it's a great, great theater town. Yeah. But everyone I knew who was like a full-time actor had to have another job. Right. And I wanted to be like an actor yeah. who didn't need another job. I wanted to like survive on acting. So I moved to New York and became a waiter for six years. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so then what... What kicked it off for you over here? Mm. I kind of like putzed around for a while. Um, and, you know, I went on my like equity, you know, cattle call auditions and all that stuff. And I got a couple things here and there. And I, I had done the last five years in Baltimore and got an agent out of that. Some like an actor saw me and recommended me to someone and got. You played Jamie? <clears throat> yeah. No, I played. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was like a cover or. Oh, no, I did. I played, I played Jamie. So, yeah. That's a heck of a... It was, you know, I can't sing that high now. That's a task. Yeah, it was a big task. I lost my voice the day after we... Like, as soon as they were like, okay, you know, show's done, curtain's down, show's over. It was like, I... Your body gone. just shuts down. Yeah, yeah, it was gone. Um, he... Uh, so Jason Robert Brown came to see the show because he was doing a concert that night. And I was like, do not tell me. Don't tell me when he's here. I don't want to know. And uh, like the way it was set up, like I was stage left and the blue light comes on for me to like walk on and somebody's like, he's here, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. And, I, you know, but yeah, it was cool. Oh man, that's, cool. a, that's a great part. Yeah. Uh, so I, just to, to kind of wrap that little thing up. So I, uh, I moved up here in like 2004 and um, so all I really ever wanted to do was play Javert. Like that was my whole thing. I was like, if I could play Javert, then I'll, move on to like a real job because I had seen Les Mis when I was in high school mm -hmm. it was like the second show I'd ever seen and um I loved it but I'd like Javert just yeah, stuck out to me for part, some reason man. I was like oh man that's a that's cool that's all I ever wanted to play <laughs> <laughs> you will someday um and so I you know I was like if I could just do it in a regional theater or whatever that'd be great and I, I ended up booking Les Mis in um like 2007 or something out in Pioneer Theater and I played Fuyi you mm -hmm. play for you. And uh, we had to lower it a little bit because I can't sing that as high as hey, you. <laughs> there were some days I'm like, oh, Lord, it's not going to come out. <laughs> right. um, and uh, and I understudy Javert. And the actor who was this the man named Merwin Ford um, was playing him. And uh, I think Merwin, we, we figured out he was on tour when I saw him. I think he was the actor that I'd seen. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away. Oh, but okay. uh, he, he was great. And he, he ended up, you know, and as a, you know, you're playing a principal role and you've got an understudy who's like, really wants to go on, yeah. you know, and you, you know, we have, and I have done this, um, been like, I'm not feeling good. Maybe I'm not feeling good in like two weeks. Are your parents going to be in town? Cool. Right. <laughs> I feel a cold coming on. Yeah. Um, and not that I would ever do that, but, uh, you know, it's happened before. Yeah, and he we're did that human for me. and we, yeah. we have grace for our for yeah. people as well. Um, and so my parents were out and, you know, and I got to go on for that. And so I was like, oh man, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. But then you, know, you get the bug more and you want to do it more. Of course. Um, and so like a couple of years went by, I like did some film stuff, like I produced some stuff and, uh, you know, it's just doing regional stuff. And I ended up like, um, injuring my shoulder pretty bad. I was singing on cruises, like a, a, a guest entertainer mm -hmm. doing like a Jersey boys without the drama kind of thing. Right. And I injured my shoulder and, um, I was kind of like, I was working, but I wasn't like working. I had not gotten on Broadway and that was like the next tier for me. I felt like. Um, and then I got this audition while I was out doing Les Mis again at Pioneer. I was actually playing Javier out there. I got this audition for a show called Beautiful and, uh, and sent my, my tape in and didn't hear anything back. And like three months went by and then I got a call and they're like, they want you to, to fly up and audition for, I was down in uh, North Carolina doing Les Mis again. And, um, they want you to audition for this. And so I, it was like, right. It was, we're, we're in, yeah. So it was right down near yeah. Studio 54. Um, and uh, I auditioned for it and then I went back and I had to like send a couple more like tapes of me singing this the song, You've Lost That Love and Feeling. And then I booked it. And I didn't know, 
I, at the time, I didn't understand like out of town and like what that process meant for mm -hmm. Broadway and how that all worked. So I was like, okay, I'm going out of town, but it might go to Broadway, but I haven't been told I'm going to Broadway. So the thing for me, because I sang, my, my track sang You've Lost That Love and Feeling, yeah. that was written by Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil. And so that was their biggest hit. It was like, it's the biggest, like most played song of like the 20th century. Yeah. And so they had final approval on who got to sing the song. And so I like rehearsed and did the entire show and they came to see me on, I think the opening of our, our previews and this is the one with Jesse Mueller. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we, I had not been told everybody else was going to Broadway. I had not got my contract yet. And so as I'm going up for the first preview, they had come the night before and, uh, the producers were like, I want to tell you, they were here last night. They really liked you. You're going to Broadway. Oh, mate. And it was, it was really cool. It was a pretty cool. I called my parents and we had a nice cry. So, oh, I love that. So yeah, that was cool. And then we went to Broadway three years on Broadway. I like had a, you know, a job for three years it was awesome. I took off, um, to do some regional stuff. And then I booked Limas and did the tour for three years as Javert. Um, and then left in, so I did the tour. I think what you were in Limas in like the 20, 2014 and 15. Yeah. So we were doing that at the same time. I was in, I was in beautiful at the same time. Yeah. So you were doing that. And then I, I did some regional stuff in like 2016 and then 2017, I booked the, the national tour. Um, and you got your Javert. I got my Javert. Yeah. I auditioned for, for Cameron and the whole, the whole thing. Isn't that a, that's a process. That crazy. Eh? <laughs> yeah. That was like six <laughs> auditions. They're like, just come back in and sing it again. It's, it's fine. He likes, just come back in and sing it again. I don't know why they do that. So, yeah, it was crazy. I remember I did that was earlier okay? in my career. I was like, <laughs> but I'm doing the same thing. Right. Same people. Yeah. Yeah. There's no and one then new. I was like, you're doing it. And then like, you haven't gotten the contract, but now you're doing it with all different people. Like all the, all the Valjeans and like, they want to see the energy between yeah. the two of you and stuff. Um, but it was cool. It was like, so like for that, I, I did this, I wore the same thing each time. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, so they only see me as this, yep. like in their mind. I like had this like dark vest and dark jacket and like, you know, darked it up. And, uh, and this is like very, you know, I don't know. It was like, uh, he, he said to me, he's like, I want you to be like a tiger. You're like, you're prowling. You're looking for him in the streets. I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, and then, yeah, I got it and went on home tour and for three years and, uh, came back. Left three in years you toured with that show? 2017 to the end of 2019. So it was like half of 20, it was only like almost three years. Jeez. Um, all of 2018, almost all of 2019 and like half of 2017. Um, are they, um, were they weekly stops or longer? You mostly weekly, longer in like the big cities. How did you maintain your health, your, your yeah. mental health, your, crazy. your voice? Your... Well, I had my dog with me too. Oh, so I had, see, I had a pit bull best. who I travel with, which was insane. Um, but come on, that's the best <laughs> thing to come back to and you have a... It was very nice to come back to. He's, he's, he's a lot. He needs a lot of exercise. Yeah. Um, so I drove a lot of places and he could fly, uh, but he, um, cause he's very well behaved, uh, in public, but he needs a lot of exercise. And so there were, you know, there, you know, you, the thing with touring is like you get, I love being in different cities. I love like eating different foods and stuff, yeah. but the hardest thing was like remembering the backstage because the stage is the same. But as soon as you walk off stage, you're like, this wall wasn't here yeah. four days ago. <laughs> um, and you're like remembering where your, where your, uh, dressing room is and, it's kind of a blur, but it's, it goes by quick. And so that's why I was like, God, it's only been, it feels like just yesterday I was in beautiful, but it's been a long time. Cause I was, that was like, you know, and then the pandemic. So I came back in December. So I, I had done a bunch of musical theater and I was like, this is great. I'm having an awesome time. I want to do TV. I want to see what that world is like. Mm -hmm. And, um, I left in 2019 with the, you know, basically what I wanted to do was just audition for everything that's on TV everything that's like film, not do any more musical theater, not sing at all. And then, you know, I moved in with my parents for a year. <laughs> yeah. The pandemic, right? Yeah. Came back up in 2021 and just started the audition again for whatever I could. And how, how's that going now? Because I know it's still like TV seems to be back on track now in film. Hopefully the strike doesn't happen that I'm hearing yeah. about. Um, I, so I did Paradise Square and that was a godsend, uh, just to have a job again yeah. um, and to work with people and be back on stage. I mean, it was like when I walked back on the stage after the year and a half, it was just like, uh, I think we all just feeling? cried. It was just yeah. great. Um, but it was different obviously cause we're all wearing masks and going, you know, testing and all that stuff. Um, so I did Paradise Square and that was, I had always 
had it in my mind that I was going to get back to TV and stuff. But after that experience, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do TV. That's all I'm going to, that's all I'm going to, well, because theater also just takes up so much time. You know, it's like, it's your entire life. Yep. You know, you rehearse for six weeks and then you're in previews for weeks and then you're like doing like for you, you're probably doing a lot of PR when you were opening the show and stuff. And like, you're just, it's your entire life and it's great, but it's, you're only doing one thing Yeah. and it's extremely fulfilling. But as artists, we do like to do other stuff. And I also just like the technical aspect of other, you know, TV and stuff. And I love working with other people. I, lo I love it because it's kind of like, you know, it's like in the military, which I'm not never been in the military, but I've got friends who have been in it and I've seen movies. Uh, and it's, you know, everybody has a specific job, you know, and it's like, yeah. that's your job. That's what you do. You're super good at that job. And that's kind of how it is in, in TV and film. It's like on a production set, like, you know, like, oh, that's the, everybody has a, a name, right? That's their job. And you can go to this person and that person helps that person. It's just so cool when it all comes together and like moving a set and all that stuff. Right. And I like acting with the camera because it's very different than acting with um, the, you know, for the stage or for the people, the audience. And it's, it's a challenge and I really enjoy it. So since then I, I um, just have been auditioning for TV and film and, and I had a, a good, end of the year last year i shot four different tv shows at the oh, end of the year last you. year so. so is that all through self-tapes to begin with everything is self-tape i've not been in an audition room since 20 you know when i 2019 basically. So let me pick your brain about self-taping sure because i need to improve at that yeah so what do you do you get your your agent send uh, you your size like uh yeah you it's, set it's up your backdrop set up my backdrop um i oh. actually painted my wall it, like i have a, an office and i painted like a big like a, a kind of like an off color blue right um and I've, you know, got my ring light and everything and they send me the sides and, uh, yeah, I'll sit down and I'll go through it and I'll see how many people are in the scene. So if it's one person, then you're just talking in one direction. If it's two people and it's a two person scene, mm -hmm. you know, you're picking teams. And so like maybe one person's here and one person's here right. with the camera, if you're the camera. Yeah. Basically what you want to try and do is let them know, let the director know and the producer know that one, you know what the scene is about, you know, who's in the scene and you know kind of how to work with the camera. So if the camera's if the camera's directly in front of me, I know this person and maybe that person has a line and might say something to this person, I might look over this person, like, really. So yeah. so I give them reactions. Yeah. Um and you just play it like a scene. And you you also what I do is try to do it as an entire scene. So the hardest thing about self taping is there's no editing. No, because they're they're staring at your mug the whole time. Right. So how do you keep that interesting? Because some of these scenes I've done scenes that are four minutes long. I'm like, yeah. they're just staring at my face for four minutes, if right. they even watch it all. Yeah. But so what you do is, so what, what is, what is film? It's just a bunch of uh, photographs, right. right? It's all a bunch of pictures. So you just change the picture. I mean, that's not my, that's, that's, that's a cut. That's the, what's it, what's, um, oh gosh. Uh, so JJ Perez is one of my, one of my teachers. Great, great guy. Um, I'm going to say Kulishov, Kulish, I'm going to say this wrong. Kulishov effect. Anyway, is this Russian, Russian filmmaker, mm -hmm. um, who like way back in the day took, took a piece of film and he would, I can't remember the, what he, I think he, I think he either had a picture of a guy. So I'll take a picture of you just looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. And then it's a picture of like a, a bowl of soup, right? And then a picture of a guy. Okay. And then he would take the same picture, not picture, but the same film, you know, of the guy just staring and a picture of a, it was actually a, a, a dead, um, like baby. Uh, it was a picture of the baby guy, picture of the baby. And the other one was like, Beautiful woman, same guy, same dude, not doing anything different, same exact, uh, you know, clip, and then beautiful woman, and then he would show his audience. He says, "What is this man thinking?" And he'd be like, "Oh, he's he's grieving the loss of his child. Oh, he's really hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's in love with that girl, right?" And so that's editing. He, he, that dude wasn't doing anything different. Correct. It's the juxtaposition of of the editing of the pictures, and so th that's what they do in the editing room. So what do you do when you're auditioning is you, you change the picture, right? So maybe you are, are here and then, you know, if you're shooting this, yeah. you, you, you change your eye line. You may do this. You may do this. Yeah. Okay. But you're changing the picture. You're just making it interesting. Maybe you're starting back here and then by the end you're up here cause it's, you know, you, you're making your point at the event of yeah. the scene. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, I'm lear I learned all this stuff. I, I started taking classes again when I came back cause like, I don't know what I'm doing. What classes you take? Uh, I took the um, Bob Krakauer class, yeah. but I also took, and Bob's great. Yeah. I love Bob. Um, but you, I, after the first day, don't you feel like I'm a shit actor? Yeah. I was he like, I, don't, I know nothing. Yeah. But it was great because it's <laughs> nice. I and mean, it's, you know, as an actor, 
you know, if you do a good, good job, everybody's like, you're amazing. You're great. But it's like, as people were like, I want to improve. Mm-hmm. Tell me what I can do better. Oh, he um, let you know right away. You know. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even tell you, I was like, I wasn't even doing a scene, Bob. He's like, yeah, hey, you're ugly. You yeah. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> Walk better. Um, but he's super smart, super yeah. smart. Um, and I work with JJ Perez, who's just like, uh, he's a great, awesome guy. Um, and he's, he, he explained cool, cool show. I think that's what it's called. Cool show effect. And so that was like, it's, it's actually very similar to Bob, but like, JJ gave me the, I, li- I like that technical kind of thing. Mm. And he kind of gave that to me. And so like what you work on like different kinds of, um, <clears throat> different kinds of things. So like if I say little, little, uh, what are they called? Um, what's the word? I can't remember. But so if I say to you, um, do you love me? And your answer is yes. Mm-hmm. I'll say, do you love me? And you say, yes. yes. I say, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Great. Yes. Yes, exactly. That was Meisner. That was Meisner. Answered from the back there from our producer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so, but that's like the idea is the change, right? Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's three different motions, three yeah. different behaviors, right? It's all behavior. Um, and just try to make it interesting. I'm still trying to make it interesting. So we'll see. Yeah. But then you do like how many takes? How do you decide which which is the most interesting to you? Uh, I send it to my, I'll do, I'll do two or three takes. Um, and I'll try not to like stop. Like if I mess up, I'll try to keep going Yeah, just so I can keep, keep it, you know, moving through. But that's also human. Sometimes you do trip over your words or. Absolutely. And so I've, I've sent ones that I like messed up on cause it just seemed more natural. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if I have to pause and think of the line, I'll just pause and think of the line, you know, because that's, that's normal. Yeah. Um, cause I think that, you know, that they want to see that they want to see you as a person. And like, because the camera doesn't necessarily lie, you could be a character. Well, I think you're the main word is behaving yeah. rather. It's not acting it's behaving. Yeah, exactly. Yes, totally. Interesting. Do you give uh, do you take students? Do you do, I do any of that? Yeah. Yeah. I've had a bunch of students over the pandemic. I started teaching a lot of like high school students who like went on to, to college. So I was helping with the auditions and stuff like that. So if people so, want to hook up with you, how do they do it? They, is it zoom? Uh, is it in person? Yeah, it's zoom. Um, I guess I could do in person now, but like most, I have got students all over the country, so it, it can nice. be, um, yeah, on Zoom. How do they find you? Uh, Josh D N Y C on Instagram. That's how I found you. That's how you found me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't, don't when you go there, like people are like, oh, "This is this is yours?" Because I have a lot of paint. I do. Yeah, I you're paint an artist too. too, right? Yeah. And so I, uh, do you a lot sell of those? Stuff is, is that just for fun? Just for, uh, I do sell them. Yeah, I do commissions. I sell them. And sometimes I give them away. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. And some beautiful work you got. Thank you. Appreciate it. Speaking of which, uh, so where were you born? Iran. Iran. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so I, I did a little thing just to thank you for having me on here. Brother. Um, do you know where that is? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my God. So that's the tallest mountain in, it's a volcano in Iran. It's the tallest mountain in Iran. It's a Mount uh, Dam- Damavar? Damavar? Mm. Damavar? That's stunning, man. So... Watercolor. It's a watercolor. Yeah. Brother, I can't wait to share the boards with you. This is gorgeous, man. Just a little thing. So they, people can see your work on there as well. Uh, yeah, Josh D NYC. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. And we definitely can't wait to share the boards with you. And you might have a new student on your hands. Yeah, right. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the hang. Yeah, I appreciate I've learned it. so much, and I, this won't be the last time. I hope you'll come back because I feel like there's so much more people can hear from you, and I can learn from you. Yeah, and I, I could uh, absolutely have learned from you too. From watching right, brother. There, so thank Maybe you. Maybe we'll do a Javert and uh, Jean Valjean next that time. That would be pretty awesome. All yeah. right, brother. Thank you. All the best. It.